slavery has been in the world since the first recorded civilizations. Ancient Mesopotamia, the Indus Valley of India, ancient Egypt, and ancient China. There was slavery in the Aztec and Inca empires and widespread in Europe even before Europeans ever set foot on its shores. Slavery is mentioned in the Bible and the Code of Hammurabi. But for thousands of years, slaves were typically the spoils of war. It was what victors got, aside from land or booty. The capable men, whether warriors or not, were often killed in battle or taken as prisoners of war while old men were killed for being useless. Slaves were mostly women and children of the losing side. There was also debt slavery. People across the ancient world who could not pay their debts were sometimes enslaved to the lender to pay off what they owed. Another form of slavery practiced especially in Africa, Asia, and the Americas before Columbus was the enslavement of women due to family poverty or to make peace between nations. Women's were, women were sometimes sold to make their family money. And in these situations, slavery was not always lifelong. Seventh century Arabs were at the first in establishing a transcontinental slave trade, mainly between Asia and Africa, and pre-existing local African slave systems began supplying captives for markets in the Middle East. Slavery was not prevalent in medieval Europe, but as the Portuguese came across slave markets on the coast of Africa in the 1400s, that began to change. And in 1452, 40 years before Columbus's voyage of exploration across the Atlantic, the Portuguese asked the Pope for advice regarding slavery. Pope Nicholas V issued the bull Dum de Versus, which granted the King of Portugal the right to reduce to perpetual slavery all Saracens and pagans and other infidels and enemies of Christ in West Africa. Two years later, he added an amendment to that granting Portugal the more specific right to conquer and enslave peoples of sub-Saharan Africa. This papal ruling in the mid 1400s granted the exclusive slave trading rights to the Portuguese and made slavery trading morally permissible by the Catholic Church on the grounds that such European missions were civilizing and Christianizing. Slavery did not become fully race-based until after the Columbian Exchange of 1492 as Europeans gained land across the Americas, grasped the potential economic repercussions and looked for steady streams of workers, both cost-effective and efficient, they first turned to, turned to the indigenous of the Americas because the indigenous were pagans and infidels, as far as too many conquistadors could tell. But the indigenous had their Spanish advocates. Bartolomé de las Casas is the most famous. He argued passionately that the Indians of the Americas could be converted and did not need to remain pagan. In fact, he argued the indigenous had souls and therefore could not be enslaved by Christians. So the Catholic Church became divided over this issue. The question was, do Indians have souls? Almost exactly 100 years after the Pope's Dum de Versas, the Catholic Church leadership met in Spain for the Valladolid debate of 1550 and 1551. It became the very first debate in Europe to discuss the rights and treatments of indigenous peoples by their European conquerors. Could the indigenous be enslaved? The answer to that question depended on the answer to the first question. Do Indians have souls? The verdict of the Valladolid debate became, yes, Indians do have souls. They may be converted and therefore cannot be enslaved. When church leaders asked Bartolomé de las Casas regarding the economic implications for the Spanish of not having a forced labor workforce at hand to build the empire, he suggested a solution, which he later much regretted. Use the Africans. Thus, the indigenous of the Americas could not be lawfully enslaved within the Spanish Empire after the 1550s, and the transatlantic slave trade, bringing thousands, hundreds of thousands of Africans across the Atlantic Ocean to the Americas to live in perpetual slavery began, and slavery became race-based.